Hello and welcome. In this video, I'll be showing you how to install and use the Pro Sidebar add-on for Blender 2.8. The Sidebar add-on was developed to help simplify and speed up my workflow when working with Blender. It provides me with a simplified interface, some helpful new tools, and an asset management engine, all available from the Sidebar in the 3D viewport. While I developed this to help improve my workflow for the specific projects that I work on, I'm hopeful that this can help other users as well. The add-on is free and open source. Download links will be in the description of this video. Once you download the add-on, you can install it by using the Install Add-on from File button in the User Preferences, then selecting the zip folder that you downloaded. Now with that done, you'll have some additional tabs in the sidebar in the 3D viewport. You can access the sidebar by clicking this arrow icon here in the top right hand corner of the interface, or you can type the N key on your keyboard. Now, before we start going through what's available here in the add-on, I'm gonna go ahead and show you how I typically have my interface set up when working with new files. Now, I find it beneficial to display only what I need available in the interface. So I get rid of the animation timeline down here at the bottom. Then I collapse the properties panel here because I've moved most of the information that I would access from this interface to the sidebar. So you can see here, if we go to the render settings, I've pretty much just moved most of these panels right to the 3D viewport. But in some instances here, like on the output settings, rather than going through all of these different panels and sub panels, I've just organized the interface in a little bit more static way. This just helps me find things within the interface a little bit quicker. And so here, I'll get rid of the properties interface. And I also remove the outliner because I moved most of what I need from the outliner to the different tabs here. And I typically only need this when I'm working with very complex scenes. And I'll just use it to organize some information and then I'll get rid of it. So by default, I typically have this collapsed as well. Now, one last thing that I wanna point out about my interface is that I have another add-on that I'm working on called Interface Splitter that quickly allows me to open up other spaces. And so up here, this menu, Interface Splitter, allows me to just open up one of these spaces very quickly. So if I do wanna access the outliner, I can just click on that and it opens up that interface and splits the interface in the same way every single time. And then I can quickly just collapse that space when I'm done with it. Or here, if I'm gonna be doing some UV unwrapping, here if I have this selected and switch to the UV editor, that just splits my interface in half so I can use the UV editor for what I need it for and then collapse it when I'm done. Now the interface splitter add-on is usable as it is, and I'll put the download link in the description, but I plan on adding more features to make it more customizable. But I'll create a video for this as I get further along with development. So now that you understand how I have the interface laid out, let me go and open up a project that I'm working on and I'll walk you through each of the tabs here in the sidebar. So this is a mock-up of a recording studio that I'm planning to build in my garage. And this is nowhere near done, but this is a big portion of what I use Blender for, this type of visualization. And I typically have a bandmate or a builder sitting next to me, and we can work in real time, trying to figure out how the space should be laid out, what materials or lighting would work best. Um, and this is another reason why I pretty much get rid of as much of Blender's UI as possible. I find that I work much faster when the UI isn't cluttered with a bunch of different properties that I'm never going to use. And so with that said, let's go ahead and take a look and see what I have available here in the sidebar. So first here at the top, we have the render tab, which shows us all the different rendering settings. And so at the top, we can switch the different rendering engine that we currently have active. I included the render image and animation button just because I find it familiar to have those there. Um, and then just all of the same settings that you would find in the rendering properties. So nothing too exciting there. Here, the scene, this allows us to change the scene that we currently have active. I also include the units. I find it very helpful to make sure that you're working in a real world scale. And then when I'm working on music videos or lyric videos, it's nice to just be, be able to quickly add in the audio file and kind of get the spacing for where the words need to be, things like that. But that's not really needed for this type of a project. Next, we have the object tab which will show us all of the properties about the currently selected object that we have. And so we have all of the information that you would expect. So we have the transformation, you know, dimension, location, rotation, the specific object data. So for the mesh that I currently have selected, UV maps, vertex groups, shape keys, the view options, modifiers, and constraints. And depending on the type of object that you have selected, so like here, if I select on this curve, you can see that now this is a curve, so it's showing me the different settings that I would typically need for this type of an object. 
But up here at the top, um, something really helpful is just the object library. And so if I have some sort of decoration or some item that I want to quickly add into the scene or something that I'm modeling, I can just save it to my library here and then reuse it in other scenes. So here, if I want to add this notepad, I can just click OK. And that puts me in this placement mode where I can you know, determine exactly where I want this positioned and then obviously change its rotation or position exactly where I need it to be. I also have a quick way of changing from object to edit and sculpt mode, which is the same setting that you would usually use this drop down for. I just kind of find it helpful having just a one click to get to edit mode. And then here, this drop down shows me a list of all of the objects. And so if I wanted to select the different objects here, I can just click through these like I typically would in the outliner. But again, for scenes that are complicated like this, if I do need to organize things or see how the scene is laid out, I'll typically just use the interface splitter and then open up my outliner from here. Here, the add dropdown is the same with the ability to add in all the different types of primitive objects. I've included a few of my own and I've changed the behavior of some of these. Like for example, if I'm adding a camera, when I add that camera, I automatically position it where the view currently is. You can run a couple other commands, you know, in standard version of Blender to move the camera to your view, but it's something that I always do. I typically position my viewport where I want it and then just add the camera exactly where my view is. But for now, I'll go and delete that. And then there's a few other commands, some things that I'm still working on, like a, the ability to draw a plane or place an area lamp. So here, if I draw a plane, I can just pick two points to just quickly add this type of object. And these are commands that I'm still working out. And there's a lot more different drawing sorts of tools that I want to add to the sidebar. Next, the materials here. Here we have the same thing to where we can access a material library. And so here there's different categories that I have saved and then all of the different assets in these categories. So if I just want to assign one of these materials, I click OK, and then I can just determine what object I'm going to be assigning this to. So I'll just put that on the floor and that just allows you to try out different materials and just kind of change out what materials you're working with. Here in the add material, you can just create a new material or you can create a material from an image, which just allows you to select an image and it sets up the nodes. So just kind of a little time saver there for me when I don't have a material already saved to my library and I just downloaded some images that I'm working with. Here, this first panel shows all of the materials that are currently in the file which I find it really nice just to be able to see, you know, all of the different materials that I currently have loaded. Here I can delete out certain materials that I'm not using anymore. I can change the name of the selected material that I have here. And then there's also different settings that typically apply to the EV rendering. So if you want to add transparency, things like that, I just put some different settings that you can access right from here. And then of course we have the information for the currently selected objects. So here these will show you all the different material slots that are on the material or the object that you currently have selected. And this pretty much behaves the same way that it does in Blender. The only thing is I find that it's helpful to have a quick way of accessing the material editor. So if I click this button here, it opened up on my other scene, but you can see I just have the node editor that I can just quickly come in here, make some modifications and then close that out. And of course, if I'm doing more editing in the node editor, I'll just go ahead and split my interface and just open it up from the interface splitter. Here, the world tab, here, this allows me to add in different worlds. So I can just add in a default world or a default sky world. Or if I have an HDR already added, I can just select this option, which allows me to browse to an HDR that I already have loaded. And it sets up the nodes in a way that makes sense. And of course, if I wanted to make modification to this one, I can just show the node editor and it opened up on my other screen again. But here I can make modifications right from here and then close it down when I'm done. Here in the collection tab, this shows me a hierarchy of all the different collections that I currently have in my scene. And one thing that's nice about this is as I click through these, I can visually see in my scene the objects that are assigned to these. And so I can just kind of get an idea of how the scene is laid out here. And then, of course, I can drill into nested hierarchies of the collection and then kind of see how these are all assembled. And of course, if I wanted to delete one of these, so let's say I want to delete out maybe this sofa here. I can select it and we'll also see all of the different objects that are currently in that collection. But here, if I just select this and click OK, just gives me a quick way of removing that entire collection from the file. And of course, I have my collection library, which is where I have the majority of my assets that I work with. And so here I can just see all the different assets. If I want to add in a microphone stand, 
I can just add that. And this works the same way to where I'm in this placement option. I can determine exactly where I want this located. And here in the collection hierarchy, you can also hide different collections. So if I want to hide all of the Archipack objects, Archipack's really great because it puts all of the objects in their own collection. You can see I can just click this eyeball icon and that removes all of that information, which it's helpful for me, like if I'm trying to plan out where studs need to be placed and positioned. Here I can quickly hide any geometry to plan that out a little bit better. And I definitely want to do more videos on the Archipack add-on. I feel like that's one of the best architectural tools that Blender has that's built in, and it's something that I use a lot. So here coming in the future, I'll create some tutorials and show some examples of how I use that in my workflow. So moving on here, um, in the View tab, here, this has a lot of the same information that Blender already includes. I put the view layer in here, and then there's also view layer information. But a lot of these panels were already included in the default version of Blender. Um, like the collections, for example, is already in here. But this never really made sense to me as far as how all the collections are listed. I find it much easier to see the hierarchy of how all of these objects are nested in the scene. And then moving on, we also have the item tab, which again comes with Blender. This shows the transformation information again. And then we have the tool tab, which shows the currently active tool that you have selected, which again is something that I don't really use that much, but again, just keep the default that Blender has. So this was just a quick look at what's available in the Pro Sidebar add-on. And this is something that allows me to build my own interfaces for the projects that I work on. And rather than keep all this on my computer, I figure why not share it and hopefully help someone else out there. Uh, this is something that will be changing a lot as I work on different projects. I make modifications, enhancements, and create new tools to help speed up my workflow. But that's all I wanted to show, and I hope that you found this helpful, and thanks for watching.